Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 6, Episode 2. This is a recap. You can watch the whole episode on YouTube if you search for Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 6, Episode 2. And uh, this is a strange episode, but let's get started. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe because there are many more seasons of Landscape Artist of the Year to come and we're really lucky to see the art. We may not agree on the outcome, but we do love the art. Here's the first one up. She is a collage artist. I'm captivated by this piece. Looks really nice, but we're going to get a close-up look here. You know, it appears to be maybe trees and, you know, winter scene. Yeah, I think that's really effective. There's, you know, you, you go back in space to a degree because she uh, she's created that diagonal, that central diagonal, which is so important. You know, you have to be so careful with landscape that everything doesn't end up being horizontal. And in this case, the trees going off the, the canvas works really well. I don't know how collage works, but it looks beautiful to me. Here's the next one, much more conventional kind of painting. This is the kind of painting they've passed over so many times. Oh my gosh. Um, but it will be interesting what happens today. Um, and let's take a close-up look of it. Yeah, these are really nicely balanced greens against oranges, real soft tones, lost and found edges. There's some sensitivity going on there that's really nice. And yes, we have our diagonals. Yes, we need those to move back into space. So, um, yeah, I'm a fan of this one. Let's see the next one. Now, the next one up is, is strange. I mean, it's just strange. I'm not sure what to, to make of it. Uh, my first idea is maybe a, a bus stop at night. I don't know. Not that it matters. I mean, it works as an abstract as well. Now, what's behind him is the place they're painting today, but we'll get to that in just a second. I I kind of enjoy his use of color, and I talk about color a lot. If you follow my videos, I talk about pushing color, meaning enhancing color. He's enhanced it about as far as I think it's possible to take it. It's almost too far out there, but let's see what he does today. Here's one that's more conventional. It appears to be on a piece of paper. I think it's an acrylic on a piece of paper. Very, very dark, um, which is fine. The distant hills create some space there, some illusion of space anyway. But uh, I, I don't know. Something about this feels a little too symmetrical and almost like it was AI generated. But you know what? We don't know how much AI is affecting our eyes these days when it comes to imagery. And that would not have been the case when this was uh, filmed. This was year six. So this is maybe around 2000, uh, well, before AI. I mean, before AI as we know it, seeing it on a daily basis. Here's the next one in sort of an oval format. We've seen round format before. I don't know that we've seen oval. I don't really know the reason for that, but you know, every artist has their reasons for things. It creates a sort of concave looking uh, perspective. I don't know how much perspective you really get when you're, deal when you're dealing with plants. Not a whole lot of distance being established here. Now, this one also really pushes color very stylistically um, and unrealistic, but um, certainly an illusion of space, which I really like. This one is going to test my, my, um, my ability to have an open mind because this is not... This is not the style of painting that personally I like. I think it's really dynamic. I think it's got some beautiful curves and lines, but uh, uh, mm, I'm, I'm not sure what, what, I have no idea what's gonna come out of my mouth as we go on. We'll find out when we get there. All right, West Wind, West Wycombe Lake, Buckinghamshire is the place where this was filmed. And this is a weird place. Probably not weird by British standards, but you, you're you not going to find a place like this you know, in the United States, that's for sure. It's a beautiful, um, enormous like park or garden with one of those uh, garden fancies in it. I think that's what they call folly. That's what they call it, a folly, right? So it's some sort of structure. You know, in our American gardens, we might have a, a garden gnome or a bird bath. You know, because we live on a smaller scale, this was a you know on, on on a very large estate, and so this would have been their lawn ornament, so to speak. I don't know that it has a function. Maybe maybe ladies get served tea there by servants. I don't know, but 
Uh, judging begins here, and I realize there's a spelling error. I hope I remember to come back and fix that. Oh, please, Joe, remember to fix that. I sure hope so. Now, when the judging begins, very seldom do we get this happen, but there are all the paintings that they did for today, and you can't see them close up. We're going to look at each one individually, but it just does an opportunity to look at them all. Um, must have been a windy day because those uh, easels are sandbagged down. Here's the first one up. She's the one that had that very, very dark painting I alluded to as being AI. She's done the exact same thing that she did um, in the painting that she submitted um, and created distance. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this. You know, it's, it's, um, I, it's, got this very, really, really dark framing and then the, the folly in the middle. And I don't, I don't understand the scratchy paint thing going on. This is a much more conventional way of dealing with landscape. This is kind of more where I'm comfortable talking about stuff. Uh, the, I, the um, what do you call it? diagonals that were, were used here are used in the, the water and, uh, and in the stroking in the water as well. So I think that's pretty effective. I think it was better than looking at the uh, structure head on, even though that's where they were facing. So I'm guessing maybe the person left their pod, got a resource photo and worked from there. It's a little hard to say. It's, um, you know, that structure does dominate. So it's, it's, it's a problematic structure. I've, I have to think for a while about what I would do. Okay, this is the person who I said really was pushing color to a very, very strong extent. And he's done it here too. I really, really like it on the building. And I really, really like it on the foliage. And I wish that he had dulled down the water and neutralized that a little bit more. Because one thing that happens if you if you push color throughout an entire painting, you know, if the whole painting is color, then nothing is color, so to speak. You need a certain amount of neutral so that your colors have the effect of really charging up, so to speak. And, and, and that's just not something he does. This one, don't understand. I think this is the person that worked on the oval. I really don't understand the format at all. So I have to pretend I understand it. And then it's very, very conventional detailed painting when you look at them individually. A lot of black being used here in the foliage, so she's not a colorist. You know, you're not, you're not seeing any uh, complementary colors going on, although she did use the complementary color on the, the toning of the outside of the board. So she must have an idea of, the, of what's going on. Yeah, this is, this is a little bit curious to me. It just, for me, just doesn't work as a completed piece, and, I, and I'm not exactly sure why. Too disjointed, I guess. I love the generosity of paint being used here. It is, it, there's nothing sparse about this. They loaded the brush and applied it. And I like a generous amount of paint. I like it when a painting announces what it is. And it says, I'm made with paint, and I'm not afraid to open up a tube and use a lot of it up. And I think it was clever to put the structure on one side and balance it with the foliage. I think as soon as you put it in the middle, it's, it's, uh, and that would not be how I would solve the problem. There's a nice little slice. Sometimes I like to see a slice of a painting because sometimes, sometimes it can have you, a lot of dynamic, can I say this word? Uh, it can be very dynamic to see a slice. Here's the collage artist. I really enjoy collage. The more I see it on this program, the more I really fall in love with it. Not that I have the brain for it, would never know how to do it, but boy, I really appreciate it. I just, I don't know, something about it is just fun. Just darn fun. Wow, look at that. I could look at that for a really, really long time. And I think what she does, um, this is not a collage from a different resource, and then she applies these, these um, patches of color. She paints these patches and then she applies them. So everything she's made and she just decides to fracture it up and, and cut it up and then apply it with some sort of adhesive. So it's a very interesting process. Now we get to the final judging. Now in the final judging, only three people of these of today will go on to the semifinals of the pro uh, of this program. Only one will go forward to the semifinals of the season, which is season six. Oh, I'm really thrilled to see our collage artist. That's that's uh, I'm happy about that, and I like that she didn't emphasize the building, although it's very present. 
oh, this one got into the finals. Okay, well, that's that's interesting. Um, you'd have to watch the episode to know the judge's reasons for that. Um, when I do my recaps, I'm judging these paintings as if they're my paintings. I am incredibly harsh with my own paintings, and I just treat these paintings the same as, as what I what I paint. Um, as I said earlier, this is much more conventional piece of art, which makes me think, boy, they really don't like conventional art. Kind of hoping they might go with a collage, although this would be my pick. And I'm always curious. I, always, I think I always ask in these recaps, you know, which one would you pick? So here's the um, the painting on the, on the left, which is a collage. She had all the time in the world to do and submit. And the one she had today was only four hours. I don't think the time constraints got to her at all. Now remember in the four hours you can work during your lunch break, so it can be five. And then there's time for interviews and, and things, but it's a really fractured day and it's a really long day. And, and it, I can't imagine how exhausting it is. I, I'm so grateful that these artists are willing to do this for us because it's, it's just not ideal for any painter, unless you're the kind of painter that thrives in this environment. I, I'm just not familiar with anybody who does. Um, I would, uh, personally, I'd have to train like an Olympian. <laughs> it would take so much energy. Not just energy, we're not just talking about stamina, but the mental energy would just be enormous, uh, beyond enormous. Uh, so that's our second semi-finalist for this episode. Here's our third. Oh, well, I really like his painting. He has a consistency of style. I think he did a great job today. You know what they had to paint today was, was a tough, tough one. I know it doesn't seem like it would be tough. Sometimes something that's real simple shouldn't be hard to do, but it's a straight it's a it's a very conventional structure in the middle of a lot of flatness. And that makes it a challenge. So we are about to find out who the winner is. And as I said, they will go on to the semifinals. So we'll get to see them again. And then we'll go on to episode three of season six. Oh, yay. Oh, my gosh. Hashtag Joe was always wrong. <gasps> did I get one right? I think I did. That might be a first. So remember to keep the whites, your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. And I will see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.